Are you by any chance frustrated about the high temperatures and power consumption of AMD's Ryzen 7000 CPUs too? No problem, there is actually a fairly simple trick or rather workaround. The temperatures I managed to knock down from 95 degrees Celsius to a mere 78 and the power draw I lowered from 380 down to about 320 watts. And all that without any noteworthy performance losses. If you were to decide to sacrifice a little bit of performance, you could lower set values even further. So how are we actually going to lower both temperatures and power consumption that simply? Well, there are a few different ways to do so. Some swear on manual classic undervolting, others prefer tedious PBO2 fine tuning, whereas lazy backs such as myself like going with a fairly primitive yet insanely effective method. With a little bit of luck involved, you could get yourselves a cooler and more power efficient system and already 5 to 30 minutes at max. This simple and actually known method I'm going to share with you today, just in case there are some among of you that haven't come across it yet. Make sure to stay tuned to the very end because I'll also be talking about how to properly stress test your system after any of those optimizations to avoid any instability such as crashing and the like down the line. Right off the bat I'd like to point out there's far more we could do and explore here but that's not the point of this specific video of mine. My goal for today is to show even the more inexperienced Ryzen 7000 users a way to not only a quieter, cooler, but even noticeably more power efficient system. While it would have been nice seeing all those optimizations already in place and applied by the CPU manufacturer AMD, well, things don't necessarily look any better over at the competition Intel either. And in fact, I'll make a similar video to this one with Intel CPUs very soon. Alright, today we'll be optimizing the AMD Ryzen 9 7950X 16 core, but the method I'm about to show you, needless to say, also can be applied to any other CPU part of the Ryzen 7000 series, with slight adjustments, that is. The keyword today is PBO2 or Precision Boost Overdrive 2 and its Curve Optimizer. Our objective is to make the CPU use less voltage while maintaining the same clock speeds. We are basically looking at undervolting, just in a more user-friendly way with an offset to make use of. Now in order to get started with the optimization, we need to first boot into the BIOS. In my case I am dealing with an ASRock motherboard. The user interface will differ slightly depending on the motherboard manufacturer and model. Usually we need to make our way into so-called advanced settings. On ASRock boards we then need to get into the AMD overclocking menu. This is where all those precision boost overdrive adjustment options are stored away. It's important not to enable PBO2, but to go for the advanced option. That way we are gaining access to the curve optimizer. Make sure these settings apply to all cores. Next up we need to change the sign for the offset. Since we want to reduce the CPU voltage, we need to make sure to select the negative sign here. In the third field it's going to say magnitude. This value will basically represent the magnitude of the offset we are about to apply as far as voltage for specific clock speeds are concerned. The higher the value, the less voltage is being pumped into the CPU to achieve the same clock speeds. If you are brave, you can start off with a value of 30, run benchmarks and stress tests and in case you run into crashes, back down a little. An offset of 30 would be awesome, but on average a lot of Ryzen 7000 CPUs only run stable at 20 to 25. Some can even only go with 15. At the end of the day, that depends on your luck and how well your CPU has been binned. In my case, I managed 100% stability with an offset of negative 20. In theory, PBO2 in a best case scenario would now slightly increase the clock speeds without any increase or decrease of power draw and temperatures. In fact, with my 7950X, I did actually see a small bump in clock speeds. This also leads to minimally higher performance. The power consumption does remain the same though. We are therefore going one step further and set a fixed temperature limit. While AMD states 95 degrees Celsius for their new Zen 4 chips is of no concern, a lot of enthusiasts still prefer lower temperatures. 
platform thermal throttle control needs to be set to manual, and following that, I just enter my preferred temperature limit. I personally think a maximum of 85 degrees sounds fine. And now in order to actually properly lower the power draw, we need to touch those PBO limits. So make sure to set the option in question to manual. The easiest and most convenient way here is to work with the PPT limit. On this ASRC board, we are entering values in milliwatts. I personally limited my CPU down to 180 watts or 180,000 milliwatts. If you set the power limit to low, your CPU will perform worse than at stock settings, but in turn will consume noticeably less power. So this is where you'll have to experiment and play around a little bit until you find that sweet spot between performance and power draw. You've completed your objective once you've reached a perfect balance with the CPU barely performing any worse than at stock settings while running at both much lower temperatures and power consumption. With Ryzen 7000 models, such as the Ryzen 7 7700X for instance, you would not enter a 180 watt PPT limit. Instead, something along the lines of 80 to 95 watts. So do not enter too high values here. I'm putting the PPT max limits for all the respective Ryzen 7000 models up on this screen right now. Now once we compare clock speeds at stock settings and those after my optimizations with a negative offset of 20, a 85 degrees Celsius as well as the 180 watt limit, there is no loss to be reported. Quite the contrary really, on average we're seeing close to identical clock speeds, sometimes maybe even slightly higher clocks. All is being tested with my usual test system by the way, consisting of an AIO liquid cooler and an RTX 3090 GPU. With these simple adjustments, I therefore managed to reduce my 7950X's CPU's temperature from 95 degrees down to 78. That's even lower than those 85 degrees I've set for the maximum. So this also proves that such a 16 core Zen 4 processor can easily be cooled by a decent air cooler. A liquid cooler is not always required. What I find to be more impressive though, is that I, with that 180 watt limit in place, managed to reduce the power draw by nearly 16% or 60 watts. Only the power consumption at idle remained unchanged, basically. But as I've already mentioned before, you could lower the power draw at full load even further if you're willing to sacrifice a bit of performance. I was not ready to do that and decided to aim for a performance sweet spot as I tend to call it. Because it doesn't seem to matter if it's productivity or gaming, there's hardly any loss of performance measurable. And that was my goal and I believe that's what a lot of enthusiasts want to achieve at the end of the day. So how do you actually know your CPU is running 100% stable? 30 minutes of Cinebench certainly aren't enough. Even if the CPU appears to run stable, it could at some point freeze or lead to a crash. This is why I'm recommending you to go for a Prime95 stress test and make sure you select the small FFTs test, which really pushes the CPU to its limits. During that hardcore test, you'll usually see signs of instabilities within the first two to five minutes already. You will either experience a classic freeze, a blue screen of death, or maybe even Prime95 workers stopping to work. So make sure to keep an eye out on all those workers and check whether they stop or not, because if they stop, your system is not stable. If your CPU is able to withstand this test for 15 minutes straight, chances are very high there's no instability. If you really want to be sure, let that test run for one or two hours. But from my experience, 15 to 30 minutes usually are enough. However, it could very well be that you'll have to repeat all these steps several times depending on how optimistic you are about your offset. Either way, at the end of the day, you will end up with not only a cooler and most likely quieter, but even more power efficient system. I can highly recommend going for these kind of optimizations if you're a Ryzen 7000 user, especially since there isn't a whole lot of work and hassle involved. In the near future, I'll also release a counterpart to this video, basically doing the same thing with Intel's new Raptor Lake CPUs. Until then, I wish you the best of optimization results and until the next time.